forest. Today, I'm going to do a review on my Land Rover. Also Alex. So welcome to the first of my reviews of my vehicles. Uh, I promised you I'd start doing them, so here they are. And yes, I have changed my hat. So this is my 1992 Land Rover Discovery 200 TDI. This is the first um, of these ones, the pre-facelift. Production started in October 1989, uh, originally launched at the Frankfurt Motor Show of the same year. And originally in three door only. Uh, the following year, 1990, you could get the five door as you see here. And flies. Now, these early ones you can tell by the small headlights. These are from an LDV 400 van with the plastic surrounds. Uh, this was only for the first four years of production, uh, known as the small light or the pre-facelift and they came with the 200 TDI, which this has. You could also get the three and a half litre petrol Rover V8, and for a short time to suit, I believe, the Italian uh, tax regulations and the fleet market, you could get a two litre four cylinder petrol, uh, the MPI, uh, although it wasn't very popular and it was quite quickly dropped. The most common one, being the 200 TDI, which this one has. Uh, 111 brake horsepower at 4,250 RPM and 195 pound-feet of torque at just 1,800 RPM, which makes these quite good towing vehicles. And I believe you can tow three and a half ton, but I could be wrong. I've obviously never towed anything quite that, that much. Now, I bought this car about two years ago for a mere £500. And it's pretty much as you see it here. The snorkel was already fitted. It did have a broken front grille, a very rusty headlight, and some bright yellow steel wheels from a, a, a Series 3, I believe, Land Rover with cross-ply tyres. Um, I replaced them with these freestyle alloys with BFG all terrains uh, and I sold the steel wheels for the same price as I paid for these so that cost me nothing and a replacement grill was like 16 quid other than that in two years basically all it's had is routine servicing work um, or I have replaced the uh, power steer or the steering box as you saw in a previous video but basically routine servicing. So let's show you around the rest of the vehicle. Um, first of all, let's show you inside. So on the inside, being an older Land Rover, it's pretty basic. You can see we have the basic speedo, rev counter, fuel and coolant. That's about it really, um, 181,000 miles on this one. Uh, you'll probably notice the instrument binnacle is identical to a lot of BL products of this period. Maestro's and I think the Metro. Uh, we have volume up and down, though obviously that doesn't work on the aftermarket radio. Rear demist and fog lights. And on this side, we have rear wash wipe, rear washer and rear wiper uh, again for the radio, long wave, medium wave um, an FM and seek buttons again obviously don't work on the aftermarket radio uh, stalks left hand side for the indicator on and of course uh, headlights and the right hand side is wipers down for intermittent, pull forward 
beautiful mist up for uh, variable speed and washers push in and that's really about it there a uh, very basic heating uh, system defrost uh, feet uh, fresh air vents in and off, off and on, on recirculating air fan speed and temperature simple five speed gearbox the diff locks uh, in obviously high and we go for neutral and low to lock in the diffs or lock in the center diff across to the right and there we go back into high uh, this one I fitted a, a CB radio obviously not standard fit and we have a clock that doesn't keep time in the middle here we have a little coin tray your electric windows and your electric mirror and that's really about it this one is fe <laughs> this one features or has had aftermarket seats put in these are out of a mid 80s I'm gonna guess Range Rover Vogue fresh air vents grab handle for your passengers really that's about all can be said for inside this is a non sunroof model which means the sunroofs don't leak little um, map pockets up here uh, the rear view mirror is actually currently in there this interior uh, is the original style blue interior uh, by Conran Design Group, I believe they were called. Um, I said this is not the original front seats, it is the original rear seats. All of the early ones came with this interior. There was no option for anything else uh, until I believe 93, maybe 94, when you could get beige. So, in the rear of the vehicle, driver's seat is set for me and plenty of room obviously there's loads of headroom with this uh, sweeping up roof line plenty of knee room this seat is obviously set for me you have your electric window switches in the doors little ashtray there and a little cubby box here although you could also get um, sort of like a mini zip up suitcase type thing that would go there and that's really all you've got in the back here so uh, in the back here obviously you can see it's filled up with my crap but you do have two fold down seats to make this a seven seater although they're only really any good for kids and that's about all that can be said in here really you grab handle and again it makes it quite light and airy with the Alpine Alpine light windows, reasonable size space, as you can see, for all my crap. So, uh, we're still inside. I've given you a brief look at the front, so just to finish off, we'll have a quick look at the back here. I've obviously fitted, as you've seen in a previous video, these aftermarket uh, light guards. Again, being an early one, you don't have the lights in the rear bumper here. Uh, when they facelifted it in 1994, they changed the front headlights to the more common larger headlights that you, most people are used to seeing, and also put lights in the rear uh, bumper here. I'm not entirely sure what the logic was. I believe it was something to do with the American market. When the door is open, the spare wheel hides the light on the other side. So I believe on the American market you must always have lights visible from the rear. So I think that's what that was. 
you have the very distinctive notched up rear window which they've carried through i don't know if, i'm not entirely sure if they still do it but they certainly did on most of the the uh, discoveries after this and this basic shape although it was revamped in 1998 for the uh, discovery 2 it was the same basic shape um, i don't believe any panels were actually the same but the actual shape was basically in production right from uh, 1989 right through till about 2004 i believe so while this is quite an old vehicle now people don't really notice them because they're still a very common sight in this basic shape and unless you know your Land Rovers you're not really going to tell the difference between this and a much later one um, you can tell the Land Rover enthusiasts because they do take a double take when they see these because these early ones are now starting to get quite rare and while this is certainly no show winner and i wouldn't want it to be I, I like the fact it's rough and ready and i'm i'm not worried if it gets the odd dent or scratch um they are slowly going up in value um although this one is obviously never going to be big bucks some original ones that are in much nicer condition are getting over ten thousand pound now so yeah the, these are becoming quite collectible vehicles now I will say from a performance point of view if you're after speed don't buy one I said earlier I think they're about 111 brake um, horsepower 0 to 60 they claim was about 17 point something 17.1 17.2 uh, seconds the best I've ever got out of it was 23 seconds and a standing quarter of a mile that's leisurely 26 seconds at 62 miles an hour so you won't be winning any high street drag races with this but it will go on forever as I said this is is 100 over 180,000 miles and it just keeps going fantastic vehicle I, I absolutely love it it's the best 500 quid i ever spent and even with all the work i've done on it the servicing the power steering the brakes blah blah, blah it, it still owes me probably less than 700 quid um which i think is an absolute bargain but uh, enough of my waffle for now let's uh you've seen the outside i've shown you the inside so let's take it for a drive so on the move. Obviously it's quite an agricultural drive. Can I steam your window up? You wouldn't really expect anything less. But As I said, it will basically go anywhere. But uh, let's get back on the track here. As I said, this is not fast, but the ride actually is considerably better than you get in, in a, de a Defender. Um, there's certainly more room to the side. Anyone that's driven a Defender uh, or an old series will know you really want the window open at all times for your arm. This one, there is room to the side. You can sit very comfortably. Five speed box. As I said, going through, I think it's an LT77 transmission. 
uh, onto a transfer box with locking centre differentials as I showed earlier on. It's not a bad gearbox, it's not the best I believe when they went to the um, the R, the uh, 300 TDI, they changed to an R380 transmission, uh, which I'm led to believe is a much better transmission than Audi's trying to reverse straight into you. it's not a bad drive obviously the steering is a bit vague and woolly partly I would imagine due to the mileage of this vehicle but also just the nature of rough road vehicles you don't want really precise crisp steering because when you're off road it would be almost undrivable and we get a Land Rover wave from someone in a Freelander I assume that's why they were waving I can't think of any other reason so very nice tend to be a bit disconcerted by that the first time they drive one and you tend to find them wiggling the steering a lot trying to compensate ignore it they actually grip quite well real demand for what it is so yeah as I said they, they actually grip reasonably well there's there's uh, there's no need to, to worry Let me there far better handling vehicles than perhaps they're given credit for. So they are a little bit bouncy and bumpy but certainly not as bad as you'd expect in a Defender. Uh, probably not as good as a Range Rover, albeit it shares most of the underpinnings with the Range Rover. big killer with these is rust. A wireless aluminium bodywork, you do get electrolytic corrosion, um, much like you do on the fenders, but uh, the chassis is not. And the chassis rots, the inner wheel arches in the rear rot. This one is going to need a bit of welding there before the next time I can see. And the boot floor on these tends to rot away. But don't underestimate the amount of rust you can get on these vehicles. The Discovery 2s, while a lot newer, actually seem to rust even worse than these. Um, on the whole, most of them will have been welded up in places by now. This is lots of patches, but it is all solid. And that's really all you can hope for. Um, especially if any of them have actually been used off-road, which this one certainly has. Mechanically, uh, cam belts can go. Um, the cam belt is due on this one. You can get cheap Chinese aftermarket ones, it's really not worth it, um, I've heard too many horror stories. Uh, you're better off just paying the extra and getting genuine Land Rover one. Uh, you want to replace the idler pulley at the same time, and in my mind you may as well do the water pump at the same time. But uh, now we're coming onto a stretch of dual carriageway. So I'll just show you, we're doing 30 in 3rd, 40, 45 into 4th, 50, 55, 
60 in the fifth, 65, 66, 66, 67, and there we go at 70. So, as I said, it is not a quick vehicle. It is a turbo, but it's uh, it's, it's not like a, a Saab 900 of the same period. Now I get around 27 to the gallon out of this. The book says it should do 33. Forget the book, you're never going to get 33 out of one of these. Unless you drive it like a nervous nun. But as I said, if you're after speed, forget it. If you're after economy, forget it. If you're after a cheap way to have a bit of fun, a bit of off-roading, and a general laugh, there's nothing better. Everyone may prefer the beloved Defender, and I personally am a big fan of the Defenders. I absolutely adore them. The reality is, I paid 500 quid for this. A similar condition, age, and well, 200 TDI Defender you could at least, at least add another naught. You want five grand minimum. And these, in all honesty, are better on-road, far better on-road. They're basically just as good off-road. They might not quite have the iconic, rugged style of a Defender, but there's a lot to love. And I certainly have no intention of getting rid of this anytime soon. I bought it to sell it. I had no intention of keeping this. I saw it cheap, thought I can tap that up and flip it quickly for a profit. And it never quite went. Two years later, it's still here. So that tells you two things, really. A, I'm a useless salesman. I fall in love with vehicles far too easily. And B, it's a damn good vehicle.
So, in conclusion, that's my Land Rover. Not the prettiest car in the world, not the fastest car in the world, but it will go anywhere and I love it. So uh, all that's left to be said is, is the usual, like, share, subscribe. I know 90%, probably more than that, 98% of all people watching this won't have subscribed. Uh, and I really hope you do. Um, it means a lot to me when people subscribe and it certainly helps the channel and helps me mo be motivated to, to produce more content. So please share, subscribe and like. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da!